John Eastman, the insane lawyer who helped convince Donald Trump that he could reverse his election defeat. Um, appears to be next in line for a subpoena from the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol riots. Now, even before he was subpoenaed, even before he could incriminate himself in a deposition or in any type of testimony, uh, Lauren Windsor, uh, the founder of The Undercurrent, someone who goes undercover as a conservative to get some pretty juicy tidbits out of these <laughs> right wingers, uh, struck again. Okay, so she beat the House Select Committee to the punch and spoke to Eastman. And I think what he had to say here could be useful to the investigation. Let's watch. Supporter to supporter, like why do you think that Mike Pence didn't do it? Well, because Mike Pence is an establishment guy at the end of the day. And all of the establishment Republicans in DC bought into this very myopic view that Trump was destroying the Republican Party. Trump is doing is destroying the inside the Beltway Republican Party and reviving the Republican Party in the hinterland, right? What they all consider to be, you know, deplorable flyover country. And this uprising that Trump got ahead of, he, he didn't create the movement. The movement was there yeah. and he saw it and got ahead of it. So in it, he, you know, kind of confesses to his role in uh, this memo, right? Eastman is to be investigated for this memo that planned to have Mike Pence overturn the elections. So here's what we know about the memo. The House Select Committee investigating the US Capitol insurrection plans to subpoena Eastman. The subpoena would be avoidable if Eastman voluntarily chose to cooperate with the committee's inquiry. I wouldn't be surprised if he refused to do that. Now, uh, Representative Jamie Raskin um, said that the committee needs to determine to what extent there was an organized effort against former Vice President Mike Pence. And we believe that, you know, some of the actors names have become known, including John Eastman, who laid it out in a memo. So here's what the memo contained. So Eastman had apparently outlined in a two page memo a scheme to try to persuade Pence to subvert the Constitution. Under this scheme, Pence would have declared Trump the winner with more electoral college votes after the, elect, after the results from seven states were thrown out at 232 votes to 222. Anticipating howls from Democrats, the memo proposes, Pence would instead say that no candidate had reached 270 votes in the Electoral College. That would throw an election to the House of Representatives where each state would get one vote. Since Republicans controlled 26 state delegations, a majority could vote for Trump to win the election. Mm -hmm. So that's the memo. Yeah, They're scheming. It didn't scheming. work, but they're scheming. Yeah, yeah. I liked it better when it was on that like po that postcard. I thought that that was a quaint way to talk about <laughs> overthrowing the U.S. government. Just put on a little card or whatever with seven points, but like each one has like three points. It's not really a seven point plan. Um, yeah, no, the entire thing is ridiculous. Uh, John Eastman does not believe that uh, if the Democrats had of the vice president spot and if they controlled 26 uh, state delegations, does he believe thus it is constitutional for the Democrats to win every presidential election? Does he believe that? Does he believe that Kamala Harris, as Jenk says this a lot, so Kamala Harris could do this then? That's what you believe? She can just throw out whatever state she wants. And then if you just, if it happens that the Democrats control 26 states, then they win. Do you believe that? No, you don't believe that. Then you're not articulating a legal philosophy. You're not articulating a philosophy. You believe it's convenient. It's insane. Pence doesn't have the authority to do any of the things that he said there. And what Eastman is providing is a marginally more rational version of the things that Trump was screaming on January 6th. Mm -hmm. Before they went to the White House, when he sent them there, him saying Pence can do it. That's all this is. And we know what nearly happened. We know a lot of the people in that crowd were not fans of Mike Pence. They had, they were convinced as much as you're convinced of any political belief that you have that Pence can do this and is choosing not to. And so what do you think they were willing to do Hang to this Pence. guy? <laughs> yeah, at that point, Pence is stealing the election from Trump. Because Pence can do it even though he can't. It's legal even though it's not. It has nothing to do with the Constitution, but they believe that it does. And so he can do it, but he's choosing not to. Why? Why is he working with Joe Biden? That's what they actually believed. 
It's madness. Uh, so the investigation is ongoing. I have very little hope for it. I don't know if I mean what, what's the outcome going to be. I'm glad they're doing the investigation, I guess, but I, I just want to understand what their objective really is. Yeah, look, this segment of all of that, and this is a story that obviously has a billion components, right. is. The most obviously hypocritical and simply power focused. It has nothing to do with anything except, wait, if we do this and this and this, then we win? Okay, let's do that. That's all it is. But in terms of illegality, this doesn't, it's not the top 10. Like Johnny uh, yeah, not gonna get arrested for writing a memo. Right. Um, Trump sending a mob after his vice president. You might get in some trouble there, no, but simply believing. So, no, no, I'm not. I'm saying in theory you could, right. you will not. But um, but no. Uh, in comparison to all the actual crimes that have happened, this doesn't necessarily rank up there. But it is another indication of the complete turn away from any consistency, let alone any respect for democracy, on the Republican side. Whatever is true is whatever will result in us gaining office. That's it. And if it's the exact opposite of what it was last time, that's fine. We had that demonstration with Mitch McConnell about the rules for getting a Supreme Court judge in the last year. What do you know, those flipped on their head. When it stops the Dems, when it gets them a seat, it's whatever it needs to be. That's all politics is for the Republicans now. So the only other comment I have about this is the attempt to overturn the election, January 6th, everything that occurred that day, it failed, clearly it failed. But I do think it's important to understand what type of organizing took place, right? Because I think that there's this tendency for some on the left to kind of dismiss what happened that day is like really not that much of a big deal, not really a big threat, mm -hmm. right? But this is their first attempt at it. And if I know one thing about the right wing, I know that they don't give up mm -hmm. and they keep going and they're persistent until they actually accomplish what they want to accomplish. So I really see what happened on January 6th as the beginning of something that could become a pretty dark part of this country, mm -hmm. right? Because it's an unlevel playing field. I, I love Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders lost. Like I wouldn't throw away our democracy just to get Bernie Sanders in, right? I value, yeah. I do value our constitution. I value, I do value the rule of law. I value our democracy, but we're talking about the right wing. They don't they don't value any of that. No. They as long as they get their guy in office, they're willing to throw everything away. Yep. And they're the ones who have branded themselves as the patriots, the mm -hmm. ones who love the country. They don't love this country. Loving this country means believing in the democratic process. They they don't care about it, they don't believe in it, and they have convinced themselves that even despite all of the recounts that took place in Georgia, in Arizona, in all these states where Trump lost, those recounts don't matter. They still really believe that Trump, the election was stolen from Trump. It's insane. And it's scary considering how many of them have just openly said that they will use violence. They, they want to use violence to get what they want. Yeah. It's a dangerous time, and so this investigation could be important as long as it's not just being done for political purposes, and it's really meant to, to respond and react in the future in a way that's gonna keep us safe. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.